So no matter how hard you try, you're never going to escape the whole graphing linear equations issue. It's like SAT, it's like general ed math in college. Graphing lines is just like a constant in your life. It's like taxes. you got to just embrace it. And this comes up, y equals mx plus b, which when you first hear this, it means absolutely nothing to anybody, right? But this is the, the equation for a line. And what it is is m is slope or kind of like rate of change, and then B is the y-intercept. And after you do like 10,000 of these, you'll get it. But basically, in real life, if you care, this might be something like um, a cab ride, you know, so the cost of a cab ride is $10 for every mile. That'd be expensive, so don't judge me. This doesn't even, this isn't accurate. $10 a mile plus $5 just to get on the taxi. So this would be a constant, right? And then this would be, depending upon how many miles you go, would change. So this is typical. But anyways, you have your slope and your y-intercept. So for example, if you had y equals 3x plus 1, right away you should be able to look at the sucker and say y equals mx plus b. I'll even write it right underneath. y equals mx plus b. Oh, m definitely looks like 3, right? And b definitely looks like 1. So what though? Like, what does that mean graphically? So the way to graph these whole y equals mx plus b or graphing lines is you always start with your b, your y-intercept. And what that means is that's where it intercepts the y. This is your y line, this is your x line. If it intercepts my y, if my y-intercept is one, you go up one and you put a point to show that it intercepted there. Then what? Then the slope is sort of your directions from there. From this point that I just did, where do I go next? That is your slope. Every slope, m, every m has to be in a fraction. Well, then you messed up, Ryan, because 3 is not a fraction. Good job, math nerd. Actually, I would argue with you that it is. Every whole number, if m is 3, it's also 3 over 1. So every whole number is still a fraction. It's just over 1. So I would go up 3, rise over run is what the nerds say, like me. You'd go up three over one. So I'd go one, two, three over one. That's my next point. And if you wanted to be an overachiever, you could do this all day. Up another three over another one, up another three over another one. Really, you only need two. Oops, I missed it. But you only need two to graph it. But you could, if you think it's fun, you could put a billion points and they're all going to be on the same exact line. So that's how you graph a line. You First, you put it in this y equals mx plus b form. Then you quickly can tell slope is 3 over 1. Y-intercept is 1. Start with the y-intercept. Up, over, up, over, up, over. Right? And then, by the way, you could have a negative slope. Like, let's say your slope was negative 2 thirds. Be careful. It's rise over run. That means you go down to, like let's, as an example, from here, down to over 3. 1, 2, 3. And your slope would look like that. So you can have a positive or a negative slope. So that's the whole y equals mx plus b. Um, what's really easy is if you have a quiz or a test, and all they want you to do is tell them the slope and the y-intercept. I mean, this should be like less than a millisecond. They said, hey, what is like, you know, negative 1 fourth x minus 3? What's your slope? What's your y-intercept? Quickly, slope, whatever is in front of the x, negative 1 fourth, done. Y-intercept. Whatever's at the end, negative 3, done. Watch the sign. Here's another one. y equals 2x plus 5. Slope. Well, it's definitely 2 over 1, whatever's in front of the x. And my y-intercept, don't even think, is 5. What does kind of, what is kind of lame is if they don't have it in the form yet. So, like, what if they had, like, for example, 2x plus 4y equals, you know, 8. And they say, what's your slope and y-intercept? And I'm like... Ooh, it's totally not. Y is not alone. Y has to be alone, entirely alone to be in the form. So I got to do a little, you know, algebra. I'm not stressed. I love algebra. Let's get Y alone. So I got minus 2X minus 2X, 4Y equals negative 2X plus 8. How come I didn't do 8 minus 2X to get like 6 or something? You can't add terms that are not like terms. The X cannot combine with a non-X. And you always put it in front just to be cool because I knew the x goes in front. If I wrote 8 minus 2x, that wouldn't be wrong, but it would be uncool. And that's important to me. So this goes in front. Now we're not, y is still not alone. I need to divide by some stuff to get y alone. 
you divide by four to every single piece, not just him, not just him, both, all three. So now I have y equals, reducing this in my head, I have negative one over two x plus eight divided by four is two. Negative two over four is negative one over two. So now what's my slope? Negative a half, what's my y-intercept? Two. So this is lame, I'll even diagram that. Lame because it's not in the right form yet. So you have to do a little math and everybody gets annoyed. All right, so I think you have them down. I will say one final statement. This is my final statement. The best way to find the slope is if it's in that form and you look at it and you're like, oh, that's so easy. Y equals 3x plus 9. Slope 3. 3 over 1. Fraction 3. What if they give you two points, right? This is kind of annoying. And they're like 3, 5, and like 4, 10. What's the slope? Oh, man. Ryan didn't like explain this very well. Well, here's how you find the slope with two points. Ready for this? m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Really, all that means is change in y, which is up and down, over change in x, which is side to side. What's this whole y2, y1 drama? Remember, this is your first point, second point, order doesn't really matter. So if this is x, y, and this is x, y, which it is, you could call this 1 and 1 because it's your first point. How about 2 and 2 because it's your second point? That's a little 2. Okay, so y2 minus y1. This y minus this y, 10 minus 5 over this x minus this x, 4 minus 3. Your slope is 5 over 1. That's how you find slope given two points. Cool? Makes sense, doesn't it? You want to argue and be like, it doesn't make sense. I hate math, but you have to admit it kind of does make sense. So that's it. That's how you deal with these kind of um, graphing linear functions and dealing with slope and whatnot. And remember, if you're having a hard time at your local high school, you can take this online at Silicon Valley High School. Pass it there and the credits will be transferred back to you.